What if General Ulysses Grant won a third presidential term? What if President Ulysses Grant won a third non-consecutive term in the White House? President Ulysses Grant, in real life, was the President of the United States from March 4th, 1869 to March 4th, 1877, and he wanted to run for President in 1876. However, he was losing popularity and the Republicans were not too keen on nominating him again. So Ulysses Grant did not seek the nomination. And But a few years later, in 1880, General Ulysses Grant ran for president again in the Republican primary, and Ulysses Grant lost the primary. James Garfield won the primary. Congressman James Garfield of Ohio won the primary, and James Garfield went on to get elected president. So let's say in this alternate scenario, General Grant won the primary. General Ulysses Grant won the primary, and because it's been a few years, his popularity has surged again, and... General Ulysses Grant manages to win the presidential election of 1880. Now, President Grant would probably either restart Reconstruction or try to do some semblance of Reconstruction or bring it back in some way, and he would fight hard for civil rights and all the policies that he had advocated for before, and he would try to rebuild the things that were maybe a little bit lost in the four years that he was out of office, and so Ulysses Grant would try to get back on the right track, and he'd do mostly well, and he'd be pretty effective, and um, maybe he would be, and he would be able to fight against many of the racist methods of the Southerners, but... Eventually, Ulysses Grant would still get throat cancer in his last year of office, probably, because he, in real life, he died in 1885 so from throat cancer, and I think he had it, had it for about a year, so he would still get in his last year in office, and he'd probably still try to make it through, and he'd probably make it through his term, but afterwards, his throat cancer would really just get to him, and that would be the end for him. Now, there are two factors here. First of all, who would be president after Ulysses Grant in this scenario? Would it still be Grover Cleveland? Possibly. Possibly. Would Grover Cleveland still win the presidential election of 1884? Possibly. So if so, then Grover Cleveland would win, and then I don't think it would it'd probably just be Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, Grover Cleveland, and uh, William McKinley, so on and so forth, Teddy Roosevelt. But it's hard to say who would be president after Ulysses Grant in this scenario, but most likely, possibly, another... Um, pro-civil rights Republican wins in this case. I, obviously, in the case that Ulysses Grant became president, there would never be a President Chester Arthur because Chester, Chester Arthur would just never be president, although it's possible that Ulysses Grant might have been forced to choose Chester Arthur as his running mate by the Republican Party and because of the, you know, the factions and all that. So, I mean, it's hard to say. Actually, I'm conflating two of my quests, two of my uh, questions here. So, first of all, who would be president after Ulysses Grant? Not sure. And secondly, who would have been Ulysses Grant's vice president while in office? Not sure about that. Obviously, it wouldn't be Henry Wilson because Henry Wilson is already dead. Henry Wilson died during Ulysses Grant's second term, and um, it probably wouldn't be Skylar Colfax either because Skylar Colfax not looking good after his uh, corruption scandals with him taking bribes and all. So, Ulysses Grant would probably choose a separate vice president, so Ulysses Grant would have been the first vice president to have three vice presidents. But, I mean, it's just hard to speculate on all these scenarios because they do not happen in real life. 